a land of myths and legends. Here in Ireland, we love telling stories. Legends such as the Children of Lear or the Salmon of Knowledge. Here's another story. The Irish language is dead. This same myth has been circulating around the world for many minority languages. And this particular one about Irish, or Gaelic as it's known, started off somewhat as a rumour. Something along the lines of, Irish is a dying language. And then some scaremongers jumped on board. They thought this version wasn't sensational enough, and that they'd turn it into a real thriller. And this is the problem with storytelling. There's a certain element of poetic license involved. You can add in a character here and there, maybe kill one off. And what happens is, people latch on to the new version of the story. And it grows wings and travels fast. And this is why I've received really strange reactions worldwide. When I tell people that my PhD studies were on technology for the Irish language, because this completely contradicts their beliefs of Irish being a dead or dying language. So many people are caught up in old beliefs of what the Irish language is about. <laughs> that it's only associated with older people in the west of Ireland. Only spoken by people living in the Gaeltacht or by language activists. And this is exactly the myth that I'm talking about. So when people cock their heads sideways and say, Irish language technology, but isn't Irish a dead language? I say, no, it's not. And I tell them about how Irish has jumped onto the social media bandwagon. That Irish speakers are online on social media platforms like Facebook and Twitter, and are being creative and having fun with their language that there's been over one million tweets in Irish to date. Here's a heat map of the Irish language activity on Twitter in Ireland. So already we can put stop to this myth of it only being in the west of Ireland. And what about this map? These are Irish language conversations on Twitter spanning across continents. And the same true story can be told for many minority languages around the world. OK, so now you might be considering joining in with these conversations. But what if you're nervous about your writing standards in your language? Should you let that hold you back? Well, it doesn't seem to hold people back from tweeting in <laughs> English or French or any other language for that matter. And that's the thing about social media. It's social and it's relaxed. The spelling rules are relaxed. Grammar rules are relaxed. You can shorten words, spell them phonetically. And this is often seen on Twitter, where the current 140 character limit encourages people to be creative and economical with their language. Which brings me to my research. So as a computational linguist, I'm interested in looking a little bit more closely at languages with the help of computers. So last year, while on a Fulbright research visit to St. Louis University in the US, I worked with Professor Kevin Scannell, and together we looked more closely at Irish tweets. We wanted to find out just how Irish has been used online. So what did we do? Well, we took language processing tools that have been designed for use with grammatical, well-structured Irish text, and we tested them out on Irish tweets. 
And what we wanted to find out was where these tools would fall over, what challenges would arise. Here's an example of an Irish tweet that would pose problems for such technology. This tweet is from an Irish Gaelic football supporter. And it says, On Tom Shaw, on Shockton Shaw Hugging, Bay to a party all, then winter at Dangan. Hope you're not too scared. Hashtag up the village. <laughs> and what the Irish means is, this time next week, you'll be partying with the people of Ratdangan. <coughs> so what's going on here? Basically, people are having fun with their language. They're being creative. Digits are being used instead of words, or parts of words. Commas dropped. The verb bay is spelled B-E-I because dropping that D-H doesn't actually affect the pronunciation of the word. And a new word is made up, party all. <laughs> a fada I-L is a verbal noun ending in Irish. If you add this to an English word as a root, you've got a new verbal form, partying. And of course, there's a language switching or code switching at the end. Now this, of course, is just one example tweet but we did in fact do an analysis of 1,500 Irish tweets to get an idea, a more comprehensive idea, of what's actually going on. And what we found is Irish is behaving just like any other language online and any other language analysed in this way. It's evolving. Online usage is leading to new linguistic trends emerging. Now, it's really important to note that we're not talking about a new Irish. We're talking about a new written variety of the language. It's a version of Irish that's more accessible to a broader range of speakers, and in particular to learners. And a recent report shows that the same patterns are emerging for our neighbouring minority languages. Scots Gaelic, Ulster Scots, Manx, Welsh, Cornish and Gerier where established speakers and learners are coming together and connecting socially online. And if you think about it, it makes sense. You're a speaker of minority language. Maybe there's nobody in your family who speaks it. Maybe your friends don't speak it. Or maybe you live hundreds, possibly thousands of kilometres from that nearest linguistic community. How do you connect with other speakers? Well, it's simple. You just go online. You find a social media platform that suits you better. And you start to engage with the other linguistic community speakers. Be creative with your language. Have fun with it. And be proud of it. Finally, the website indigenoustweets.com provides statistics on minority languages on Twitter worldwide. Many of these languages listed on, on this website are often referred to as outdated or dying, when in fact the statistics tell a completely different story. They show a reality that debunks a myth. And this is where I feel that technology and minority languages can go hand in hand. I strongly believe that technology can be a huge contributing factor to the survival of minority languages, and in some cases, maybe even a, a revival. So what's the moral of this story? Don't believe every story that you hear, because it may in fact be a legend. <laughs>